Um, I am I'm very pleased to have um, a great female mentor, um, a lot of experience in the sport. Um, she's an athlete, a trainer, licensed coach, currently lives in Barcelona. So you're getting a, 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 a live feed right from Barcelona. Um, Larissa, my daughter, has actually uh, been to many camps when, when she was here in Canada. Awesome. So without further ado, I, I, I'm pleased to uh, introduce uh, Allison Lemon and um, let's get this going. All right. So thank you, Allison, for being on our, our, our webinar here. Um, Thanks for having me. No worries. Um, if you want to uh, go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself, the uh, floor is yours. Okay. Uh, I'll, keep it, I'll keep it short because you guys got my, my resume, I guess. Um, so I grew up playing in Mississauga and um, I was not very talented when I was a younger player. I was very enthusiastic, but um, my, my love for the sport um, started with um, a really great coach when I was about 13. Um, I had a coach uh, really sit down and talk to me about um, how good I've come along, talked about my goal setting, talked about um, just a lot of very sentimental things in my life that I was going through a hard time at the time and he took the time uh, to, to help me in my, as a person, not just as a player. And that was one of the reasons why I continued to play and continuously pursued, 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 because um, when I saw the love that he gave me on the field and off the field, it really motivated me as a person to, to be better, not just for a coach, my players, but for myself. And um, so I also had a very um, lucky upbringing. Um, I got to play with most of the men's teams uh, between the ages of 15 and 22. Um, the director of the Aaron Mill Soccer Club at the time, Joseph Komlodi, he also owns his own academy now called Pro Stars. Um, he treated me like uh, a daughter of his and I was like a sister to the men's team. So I was very lucky to be in a competitive environment um, with people that wanted to be on the field all the time. So I grew up in a really strong football culture. Um, a lot of good banter, good jokes, uh, a lot of friends made. Um, and that again, uh, that kind of environment really brought the best out of my personality, I think, because um, it kept me humble. It kept me, it kept my mouth shut a lot of the time because I knew when I'm playing against guys that physically, yes, they're going to be stronger physically, they're going to be faster. So I had to tune into um, my own abilities and what I was best at and what I had to avoid when playing with the men. Um, and some of those things were, you know, I had to really create open pockets for myself um, a lot farther distance than I would with the women's team because the men can approach me faster. Um, I had to think three steps ahead. So I already had to know before I receive the ball, who the ball is going to go to and where I'm going to run afterwards because I need to know where the ball's going, how I'm going to support that player, and where the ball's going to go to next. Um, so it forced me to learn a lot quicker. It forced me to play a lot faster and think faster. And so a lot of my technical abilities and movement on the pitch uh, came from the ability of playing with men because of the speed of the match. Um, I was lucky to play for Humber College. Um, we placed third in nationals um, the year I was there. And then shortly after that, I signed up my first contract in Switzerland. Um, so I was there for three seasons. That was probably my best experience in football. Um, I had an incredible coach. Um, I learned at every single training, I learned something new whether it was a value, whether it was a life lesson, whether it was a skill, a functional play. It was honestly um, an incredible experience for me. I also got to travel a lot with the team. Um, most of our games were anywhere from two to five hour drives away. So we, we were all over the country. Um, 
a lot of time with a lot of foreign languages, <laughs> but uh, I managed. And um, so, yeah, I, I also played in Italy. It was a really good experience. Um, my, my playing personality, um, I don't think, came out the best in Italy because they're very, the country in general is a very slow country to play in. It's as we say in, in, in Spain, no pasa nada, very calm and relaxed. Um, and I'm a very uh, intense player. I like fast and I like to move forward right away. So I didn't feel my playing style was the same as what the coach wanted. So I came back home after that season. Um, I also played uh, for the Canadian national futsal team. Um, had a great experience playing in the World Cup in 2013. We went to um, Colombia for the World Cup. Uh, we played about, we had four games. We did not get out of our bracket, but um, we had two wins out of the four and then two losses. Uh, we also played four friendly games, one against Brazil, which we beat, which was for us, a Canadian team beating Brazil is kind of like, yeah, a dream. <laughs> um, so we had uh, an incredible experience. Um, some of the players left um, uh, before the tournament was over, but I stayed. I, I saw the finals, was networking, met a lot of incredible athletes on my journey. Um, and I came home with a lot of insight and um a lot of personal growth, I think. Um, after that, I stayed in Canada, played League One with North Mississauga for two years. Um, was was fun, but the environment, I don't think, was professional. And that's just when you're when the coach is serious about the program, when the club and the academy you play for is serious about your program, there's a big difference in just showing up to training and lacing up your boots. It's a process. Um, and it's difficult to explain all of the process in one webinar, but um, I'm open to doing more with you guys if you'd like to in the future. Um, 100%, thank you. Yeah, um, but um, yeah, so there's a big difference between my experiences in Europe and in Canada and in US. Um, I also played with Barca B for three months. Um, I was on trial with them because I had left my team in Budapest and I came to Spain because Barcelona has been my dream city to live in and it kind of seemed like the right move at the moment. But I was in a motorcycle accident and I was injured for 14 months. Um, so hasn't been, <laughs> recently hasn't been the greatest, but um, I've been able to play since January and I started playing with a men's futsal team. It's a, actually a street, a street football community in Europe. So it's called the Ghetto Games. And I'll be, I was supposed to go to Latvia for a tournament because I won my tournament in Barcelona, but that's going to be rescheduled because of the coronavirus. So um, I'm going to continue playing this new sport. Um, I'm also hoping to have a trial with Espanol and Europa, which are first and second division teams in Spain. And that will hopefully be in August, depending on how the virus situation is. And I've also been practicing foot volley, which is basically football on a volleyball court, out, like on the sand. And it's a very hard game. It's not what you think. It's not just take a, take a volleyball and kick it around. The ball is actually similar to a futsal ball. It's weighted. Um, and it's, it's a lot harder than people think. Um, so I'm really enjoying learning that sport. And uh, I also play basketball. So I like to, to stay active. And I train twice a day, even in quarantine. I make time to, to stay healthy. So... That's just kind of what I'm doing right now. That's awesome. <laughs> that's fantastic. That's uh, basketball. Um, yeah, that's, you know what, keep, keep busy. Um, how is it, how is it over there with the COVID and stuff like that? I know we, we're, uh, we're on lockdown over here and uh, 
we're trying our best to do a lot of um, uh, online training um, yes. and, and, and continue doing that, right? Because otherwise, if you don't, if you don't do any of the training, um, I, I believe you your, we do get back. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I went out to the backyard and I was, uh, I was talking to my daughter and I went to get the soccer ball. And then I was just, just regular keep ups. It was just going to start the ball. And then the ball was going all over the place. And I was like, wow, <laughs> uh, I got to, I got to really make sure that I do this on a daily basis. Cause if I go back to the pitch and then try and uh, demo, oh man, I'm going to be in trouble. Right. So <laughs> yeah, we, we all got to make sure that we're uh, on top of our training and, and continuing, you know what I mean? Try and try and make sure that we, we eat the right foods. Um, nutrition is a must, you know, um, we're not saying not to indulge here and there, of course, we're, we're human, but make sure that we can, we, we watch what we do, right? Because we're the, as athletes, uh, as coaches as well, um, you're, you're the product, right? You're the byproduct afterwards. Um, if, if you're not healthy and, and, and willing to take the next step and go down that pathway, then if you're not following that, you're just gonna, you're just gonna fall off the bandwagon, you know what I mean? So. Yeah, so that's actually something I kind of was hoping to talk about with the players today or the, the women. Yeah. Um, because I want to just stress about the importance of having a good routine because this is something I'm working on in a player coach project of mine with um, a lot of different professionals in the industry. But um, when you have a good routine, you create healthy habits. When you have healthy habits, you're able to reach excellence. A lot of people don't understand the difference between, you know, being the best or being, you know, the greatest versus succeeding excellence. Um, and I want to, to kind of talk about how we can, can build that as an individual, because I think this is something we're in a pandemic that's never going to happen again. We're never as athletes, we're never going to have this much time to recover, to self reflect. Um, to work on our mental health and to work on our weaknesses. We're never going to get this again. And a lot of people are upset about it because they think they're going to lose their opportunity. But actually, I think it's going to be the best thing for all the athletes. Um, you don't see many people in a... Um, oh, did we just lose the coach? <laughs> um, you don't see many people... Um, Oh, sorry. I just lost my trail of thought. Sorry, guys. One sec. Um, yeah. So we're, we're basically able to be better if we work and focus on ourselves uh, during the quarantine. So I'm just going to kind of go over. Oh, we're back. Okay. No, I'm back. Sorry about that. I was, yeah. uh, I was on the, uh, I had my tablet here and uh, first time ever, of course, technical difficulties as I'm watching there, sign pops up on the, on the screen there and goes, Okay, guess uh, it's gonna overheat. Your your tablet's overheating, and I was like, "What? What do you mean overheating?" And then all of a sudden, it's like it's gonna shut down in 20 seconds. I'm like, "This is a joke, right?" So I press OK, and all of a sudden, you're gone. And I was like, "Everyone's gone." So I do apologize. I'm back. Uh, I continue on. <laughs> Sorry cool. about that. Yeah, no worry. Um, so I was just saying how your routine becomes habit. Your habit becomes your level of excellence. Um, so. These are things that um, like, I just wanted to define, like what is a routine? So a sequence of actions that you follow regularly. A routine can be like, you know, you wake up, you have breakfast, uh, you go on your computer, you read something, whatever, things that you do on the daily basis. Um, now we talk about a habit. So a habit is a regular tendency or practice, um, one that's kind of hard to give up. So. For example, a habit might be doing keep ups every day. You know, a little every day, you're gonna have, you're gonna be eventually better. A bad habit might be biting your nails, I or stress eating. These are two things I grew up doing a lot of between the two. Um, now, when we try to define excellence, um, it's kind of a hard quality to define, but um, it's basically being outstanding or extremely good at something as a person. Um, I like to, to look more at people that are excellent or that have shown excellence. Um, one of the big things I'm going to talk about now is Michael Jordan's documentary. I don't know if anyone's binge watched it, the, la the first two episodes at least. Um, incredible. He is an incredible uh, 
mentor for a lot of young athletes. Um, just watching him and the way he, he talks to the media at a young age, he's incredibly humble. Um, he always puts the team first and he shows up at practice and knows how to motivate his teammates, how to um, be better for them and help them be better. And I think that's, that's when you look at someone you can think of excellence is someone that makes other people greater. Um, that's something uh, growing up that was difficult for me because um, I, I had a lot of, um, how do I say it, I guess, social problems, especially fitting in with women. For me, um, I'm not much of a talker socially. I like to talk about the game. I like to talk about my objectives, my goals, how to be better, because when I'm at football, my world is football. And for me, because my, um, my priorities were to play at a professional level, a lot of my teammates and I didn't get along because they were coming, they wanted to play at a high level, but just at a high level, they didn't want to be professionals. So their um, priority wasn't to always talk about football. You know, they wanted to talk about the cute guys in their school or, um, oh, look, I got new shoes. Very very nice conversations <laughs> which we all have but for me I don't take that onto the field I I leave that as soon as I leave the car my thoughts about the outside of the pitch are they stay there um, and for me I think that's what was a big changer in the way coaches looked at me because they saw that I was um, I had alertness and focus when I was at training you know, I'm not the one sitting down talking and joking around with my friends. I'm staring at the coach or doing keep ups when we're having a water break because I want him to know I'm ready. I'm I don't need to have a break. I can get right back into it. Um, not all coaches are like that. Not all coaches are going to be aware of that. Um, but I, ha I was lucky I had some coaches pick up on that and they took me under their wing and I became, you know, the one who would help set up the next activity. I would be the one they chose to do demonstrations. Um, I would stay after practice and talk to them. I would come early to practice and do training with them. Um, when you show initiative, um, self-discipline and dedication to a sport and you have a coach that can see that in you, it's probably one of the best feelings. Um, I would have loved to have that feeling with other teammates, but it never really happened for me. Um, I had great experiences with the men. That's the closest I got from having a really good team or culture because men in general want to play. They come to training early, you kick around, you joke around. When training starts, it's serious. You stick around and you have fun, you do bicycle kicks, you're creative, it's funny. With the women, I never had that. Even in, in Europe, never had that. It was, it was a business more in Europe. You come in, you get in, and you get out. Um, but I want to promote that football culture the way I had it with the men because when I was seeing the way the men in professional teams, they are, they're, they have this energy that is so infectious that you almost just smile. Like... I've never smiled in my life the way I do when I'm around men who play and who love the game because it's just passionate. With women, a lot of the time, it's like we are very emotional creatures and sometimes we can't turn it on and turn it off. And I think um, this quarantine is something that can be very good for us because if we can tune in to ourselves and do a lot of self-reflection i think we can be better individuals um on a personal level but also be better for our team and for our our family our friends our teachers our mentors um for me one of the the habits i've been been really into um since the quarantine started was i do meditation in the morning and meditation at nighttime and it can be anything from talking about or thinking about um, what I'm going to do in the day. I might close my eyes and think strongly, okay, I have this I want to do. I have that I want to do. Um, I'm going to complete this. 
And then at nighttime, it might be, okay, reflection. Did I complete those tasks I, I thought about in the morning? Could I have done something more? Could I have used my time more wisely? What have I learned about myself today? Um, I've done a lot of self-exploring, and I think that it's really helped me with my anxiety, with my um, controlling my emotions, really. Um, a lot of the people from my home in Canada, you know, they call me all the time worried, oh, how Spain, because we're right now the worst with the coronavirus in the world, with the most deaths. But honestly, it's not something to be worried about because if you're living a healthy lifestyle, um, you're staying fit, you're staying mentally sane. These are things that it sounds easy, but yes, it is hard to do, um, especially in a time of pandemic. But if you take the small steps to remain disciplined, wake up in the morning, I get up at 6.45 every day. I don't have school, I don't have work, but I do it because I want to do my meditation. I want to do a yoga session in the morning. That way my day starts off really positive. Um, I've been doing more daily affirmations, talking nice things about myself and about the people in my life. Um, I've been doing a lot of research on football with other athletes, other sports, um, working on, you know, watching documentaries. These are all things that can... I think in this time be useful as an athlete um, to be better. Um, it's really just staying on top of your goals. And like, I don't know if you guys saw, I posted something on Instagram. I think your coach gave you my Instagram. Um, but I talked a little bit about the difference between motivation and discipline. Um, motivation comes and goes. You can wake up one day feeling fantastic and then you can wake up another day and feeling absolutely shitty, um, not wanting to get out of bed, you know. Um, I've had many of those days in my life. Um, you go to training kind of feeling like blah. Or some days you come to training feeling like, yeah, like, let's go. And I find that um, that's emotion. That's emotion. When you look to yourself or to your friends or to your teammates or coaches for motivation, you're playing off emotion. Um, what's a difficult skill to learn is discipline because it doesn't matter how you feel in the morning. It's like, it's like going to school. You have to go to school. You wake up. Okay. My alarm set, eat my breakfast. Okay. I'm going. It's, it doesn't matter if you feel bad or feel good. It's, you just get it done. And I think at the end of the day, the level of our excellence will come down to how well we treat our habits. So if we use our you know negative energy our bad feelings and continuously do our habits we're going to be at a level where we're going to always be here but if we bring that energy even if we have a bad day we go into that training and then are able to turn that on to physically say to ourselves have a mental minute before you go on the pitch close your eyes say okay i'm here time to work let's get it and then you go onto the pitch, go into the, the training facility, whatever it is, um, you will see better results. I, I honestly believe this because if I didn't take my mental minutes every time I went to training, I would be, you know, I think having conflicts with a lot of players, with a lot of coaches, because um, if you're built up with stress and anxiety from something external, and you bring that onto the field, it's very negative. Um, so I think that discipline has always been a very key factor in success as an athlete, or I should say excellence in an athlete. Um, that's something that takes a long time. Um, it's not something you learn over a week, a month, a season. It's something that takes years of practice, um, years of mistakes, and years of failure. And um, I think that when we reflect on our missed opportunities or our mistakes, it actually gives us an opportunity to learn a lot more about ourselves because um, there's a lot of things that I, that I went through personally that a lot of people, if I told them, they would be like, oh, you made the wrong decision. Of course, they, I, I'll, I'll agree, maybe I made the wrong decision. Um, when I was playing football in Italy, 
I was contacted by a coach um, saying that we had uh, a Toronto FC team being created and that it was going to be our first semi-professional league. This was in 2014. And I left at playing with FC Verona to come back home and represent what I thought was my, my city and wanting to, um, to, be, to be proud of that. Unfortunately, the program lost its, um, its money and we never made the team. So there I am with no contract, no team, and I left on bad terms because when you leave in the middle of the season or almost at the end of the season with a team, it doesn't look very good, of course. Um, but it was something I couldn't just go back and play again. Um, so I had to kind of start off again. That's why I stayed and played in Canada with League One when they started that league, because I thought, well, I screwed my opportunity playing in Italy and coming home for something that didn't work out. Um, but if I didn't do that, then I maybe not wouldn't have, you know, gone to, to play in Budapest, which is one of my favorite cities in the world. It's an incredible city to play in. Um, and if I didn't do that, I wouldn't have been able to go to Barcelona and trial with Barca B. And that was, again, an incredible experience. Um, and now I'm living here. And after my rehab and everything, now I have the opportunity to have trials with a first division team and a second division team. So I would never have had that if I didn't come home that year. Um, so having reflection is so important. Um, one thing that I did starting when I was in Switzerland, and that would have been in 2010, 2011 was my first season. Um, I recorded every training session I was playing in. Um, and when I say recorded, I mean, I, I had little notepad, every training at the end of each session, I would sit on the bench and write down every activity we did and my interpretation of why we did it. Um, for me, because I was playing in a foreign country, they didn't speak English. And that's something that a lot of people don't tell you is you go to another country and they're not gonna necessarily translate everything for you. So you need to learn basic language skills if you go to play in another country and soccer skills, talking like soccer language, I guess. Um, with that being said, um, the importance that um, this has to me for writing down everything that I learned in my, my training sessions in Switzerland, um, I can go back now and understand what I was doing, what I was learning. I can ask my teammates, hey, on Tuesday's practice, this is what we did. Why did we do that? And, you know, some of my teammates were able to explain me, oh, we were trying to um, surpass the attacking third or the defensive third um, in a creative way. And I can kind of see in my notes if that's what I understood from the training session. Um, when I was coaching, um, because that's something that helped me, um, I was coaching a U17 girls team uh, in Oakville and um, what I had them do after every practice was self-reflection. So I asked them what they liked about the training session, what could have been better about the training session and if they, or what they learned in the training session. And then I let them talk individually in front of the group. They talked together um, about what they worked on or what they were excited that they learned or what they, you know, sometimes it could even be a competition they won, whether it was one V ones. Oh, did you see me do a rainbow over someone? Oh yes. That's so cool. Whether, whatever it was, they were able to express themselves in, um, uh, auditory way. I think that, um, having that opportunity to, to talk with your teammates about how you feel, especially to the coach, um, not only as a person do you feel good that you're expressing your opinion, but you have people that want to listen to you and want to express their opinions. Um, and at the end of the day, I want to build leaders. I want to build, you know, on the field, you have 11 players, but, you know, there are 11 leaders to me. On the, player, the players that are on the bench, those are leaders too because they're going to go into the game 
knowing what their job is, whether it's um, to disrupt the other team offensively or to, to become a tactical change. There's always a purpose behind every, every player going onto the pitch. And it's just about tuning into yourself and understanding the feedback you get from your own teammates, your own, you know, the coaches, your parents, whatever it is. Um, and at the end of the day, I think that um, having open chats, open discussions um, really can create uh, more of a family-like environment for, for the players and team. Um, Coach, do you, do you want to touch base on anything? Yeah, um, basically, exactly uh, what self-reflection is, is a massive thing. Um, I find that when you do something, um, whether it's soccer or anything personal in your life, um, to reflect back on it, you can actually look at uh, key things that A, worked out great for you, or B, uh, things that you need to improve on. You know what I mean? And if yeah. things that you need to improve on, um, how do I get improvement? So do I, I, I go to my coach, I go to my mentor, um, and then just basically have like a powwow, you know what I mean? So how are we going to get to the next step, right? Because what happens is everybody's objective and direction is uh, set for the way you see it, okay? Um, so we can all get to our, we can all get to the, 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 the finish line, but we all need help along the way. And you know what? There's no better way than doing it with support and people around you that uh, have a been there, have the experiences or can actually uh, direct you in that, in that area. So uh, definitely reflection, self-reflection is massive. If you can look in the mirror and identify um, the good qualities of what you possess, things that you need to work on, because I guarantee you, we all need to work on things. Um, 100%. As, as a coach, um, uh, even myself, I'll go, I'll, I'll do that, right? I'll take a look and I'll be like, okay, hey, so I did this today at work or I did this, uh, this is what's going to happen in my coaching session. Um, there's been coach, uh, there's been sessions that I've ran and they've been successful. There's been some that uh, I, I planned it to go in one way. They didn't come out that way, um, but it doesn't stop me, right? It doesn't stop me for who I am. I continue doing it. Continue doing yes. it. You got to have a love. You got to have a passion. Um, and and self-reflection will build. We are all going to make minor mistakes, big mistakes. You, you got to capitalize on that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So even on the field, you know what I mean? You make corrections all the time, all the time. If things don't go your way, make yeah. those corrections and continue going forward. So that's excellent. Self-reflection, I believe, is a must. And I believe... Um, people don't see that and they don't mention it to them. You know what I mean? So um, yeah. it's, it's a great way to, to identify that because players individually, like for yourselves, ladies, um, there, be, there may be things in your head or, or, or things that you you're thinking about. And um, if you don't reflect on it or get the support that you need, you know, you might not get that help, right? If you stay silent and quiet about things, you know what, going out, reaching out, talking to your co-teammates, talking to your, to your coaches, parents, you know what I mean? Support is the biggest thing. You only rise. Everyone rises together um, um, with support. You know what I mean? So yeah. uh, excellent job on that. That, that, was, that was very inspirational um, and, and a very key eye-opener in, in terms of uh, athletes, your, your sport, and individual uh, reflection. So awesome on that. Uh, ladies, uh, the floor is open. Um, if you any questions you have, please feel free to ask uh, Allison. Um, I think that, again, I've, I've, I'm going to mention this again with COVID going on and us being um, stuck in our homes. Uh, I think we this has opened up another avenue, you know what I mean? Uh, to get connected with people um, just like yourself, Allison, all the way in Barcelona, you know what I mean? Get connected, um, uh, seeing your views, uh, the perspective of things. I think it's fantastic. So, um, yeah, it's negative because we're stuck in our house and we can only do certain things, but yeah. We have to turn around the negatives to, to uh, positives. So, ladies, you know what? The floor is yours. If not, then uh, I'm going to be playing a, a game, and I'll just start pegging you guys out. Be like, guess what? Next person that's be coming up uh, will be so. So, ladies, uh, you can unmute your mics if you're going to uh, ask a question. Feel free. You know what I mean? Go ahead. It's all yours. Anyone? All right, then. All right, so what's going to happen is, here we go. So, contestant number one. <laughs> contestant number one, here we go. Ready? 
you all have questions, I hope. Ready? So I can see here because I'm I have a small little tablet and I only have four screens, so I gotta keep flipping through pages to see the group. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna take a look at uh I'm gonna take a look at Taylor. Taylor, you're right there. I can see you. You're up. <laughs> you can hear me, right? Yep. Okay. Um, who has been your biggest supporter throughout? Um, I can, it's kind of difficult question. Actually, I'm glad you asked that. Um, during my self-reflection, it really has been myself. Um, I didn't grow up with very supportive parents. Both my parents still think I should be at home with a nine to five job. Um, I had a lot of friends with a similar expectation of me, you know, Allison, we never see you. You just play soccer at nighttime. We can't visit you after work. Um, so at the end of the day, my biggest support has been the girl in the mirror. Um, I've had to really work on my confidence and really love what I do and who I've become because um, it's not easy um, being an athlete and especially a female athlete because there's really not a lot of things we can do. We don't get paid well. It's awful. Um, there's been a lot of problems with contracts for a lot of countries I've played in. Um, the game is different everywhere you go. There's different um, expectations of your time and, you know, everything is different. So at the end of the day, like, um, I've had to go from, I'll give you an example. When I, before I went to Switzerland, I was playing soccer in Humber College. Um, and I found out two days before, hey, Allison, you got chosen to go for a trial in Switzerland, pack your bags. Okay. Um, ask, ask anyone what they're going to do in those two days before they leave. I guarantee you party, see friends, family, whatever me packed my bags. I went for a run. I was ready. I knew that's what I wanted because, um, I looked at it as one shot, one opportunity, quoting Eminem, whatever you want to call it. But, um, it's what I wanted. It's when you prioritize things in your life, um, then they're gonna be, they're gonna last longer. Um, if your priority is your friends and your family, and there's no problem with that, people need to understand that that's okay, but they have to understand the separation between amateur and professionalism. It's okay to play soccer for fun and at a good level, it's no problem. But when you're looking at being you know, reaching your personal excellence, there are going to be things that we consider as sacrifices because we're going to miss birthdays. We're going to miss parties. I didn't go to prom. I had a, I had a soccer game. Uh, we were, we had to play with nine players that game and we won, but I was like, why would you miss a soccer game? To me in my head, I was a little bit loco, a little crazy because I thought to myself, like, you don't come all this way in a season just to miss a game for a party or a celebration. You know, the football is the celebration at the end of the day. It's like a dance recital. You know, you, you train and at the end of the day, you're the game. It's the performance, you know? So I hope that answered your question on, on, I guess, motivation, you know, as myself, it's, that's who I looked up to. Awesome. Uh, awesome question, Taylor. Thank you. Our next contestant coming right up uh, will be Chandra. Go right ahead. Okay. Um, what opportunities did you have when you were like a teenager, like young, that helped you gain opportunities in Europe? Um, I played a lot of football. So I, like I said, I was playing with a, a men's team. Um, I got a lot of opportunities. Um, so I played my a year older than me when I was. When I was 16, I played U17 OYSL, and then I played with the boys OYSL my age um, growing up. I played in the provincial program. Um, I didn't feel that I was a good fit for them at a certain moment in my time playing with them. Um, but I branched out to different academies as well. Um, if you want to play professionally, you need an, you need an agent, um, someone that... Um, has similar values to you, um, that has the context you want based on what country you want to play in. 
um, do your research because I think that um, every every country has different ways of playing and for example i probably would not suggest playing in the i would say anywhere from like in in budapest in there i probably wouldn't suggest playing in that area um i wouldn't suggest playing in the middle east um i would suggest playing more in rich countries like germany switzerland italy was okay it could have been better in my opinion um, but they're getting better. France is an excellent league. Spain is getting better. Um, but do your research. Um, my opportunities really did come from uh, branching out, networking. Um, I played with a lot of different academies um, because I just, I was curious. Every, every trainer is different. Um, whether it's, you know, working as a technical trainer or a mental coach or a fitness instructor. Um, there's always some type of knowledge you can learn about yourself with um, working with different individuals. So I hope that kind of answered your question. Awesome. Awesome. Really good question, Chandra. Thank you. Um, Rebecca. Um, what were your proudest moments as a player? My proudest moments? Proudest. Proudest. Okay. Um, I have to say representing my country, playing futsal in the World Cup, um, not just because I was able to, to play an incredible sport for my country, but um, it really showcased my values that I've learned through playing the sport because when we were in Colombia, we went to one of the poorest parts of Colombia to play, and um, I remembered at the end of the day, um, I came home with nothing in my luggage. I gave away my futsal shoes. I gave away, well, I, I have one jersey that I kept, but I gave away my jerseys, my shorts, my soccer balls, my clothes that I had to people on the street because they had nothing. And it really, um, I really gained a lot of humility after that perspective in my life because. Um, I don't think I would have had that experience if I didn't excel at a sport. And like, that was my proudest moment was be able to, was be, was being able to represent my country to receive that um, life lesson of how ma material things mean nothing. Being an, being a minimalist is such a, a great value to have. And we, we take that for granted a lot of the time because, you know, it's cool to have nice clothes or to, you know, get your hair done, your nails done, whatever, have makeup. Um, but at the end of the day, like, it doesn't change who we are. It changes our opinion of ourselves. And I would rather be remembered for, for giving someone something they needed versus being someone I wish I was. Um, so for me, my proudest moment was, um, was was learning that life skill uh, when I went to Colombia. Awesome, thank you very much on that, and uh, thanks, Rebecca. Um, Larissa, go right ahead. Okay, um, <laughs> what do you recommend a player does on the pitch when their gameplay isn't going as planned? Oh, fantastic! Because I've been there, done that. Um, whew. so I have a rule with myself. Um, if I'm playing as a striker and I miss three shots, I don't shoot. And I'm going to explain you this why. So, um, usually it's because there's a distraction mentally for me if I'm, if I'm shooting and I'm not scoring. So when something's not going my way, I really do my best to focus in on my teammates. Um, I try to prioritize who's in the best situation. Um, go back to what the coach says, you know, if we're really trying to be offensive in the first half, um, how can I find a player in a better situation? Or if I am that player in that situation, you know, I need to be better. Um, so it's just about, um, I guess, you know, prioritizing on the field, in my opinion. 
if you have a bad game, it happens. If you have bad moments, it happens. Um, don't worry about your mistakes. Just worry about, um, well, like not worry, but overcome what happens. Because for example, if you have a defender who, who likes to pull your jersey, it's, it's a mental problem for you because you're going to be thinking, oh, I don't want to go against a defender. They're going to hit me, touch me, pull me. But instead of thinking negatively, think, okay, um, how can I drag this player or like come to me so I can open up space for my teammate who will then have a better opportunity? Or how can I uh, get away from this player and receive the ball with more space um, so they don't have the opportunity to, to pull me or um, to distract me? It's about these little things in the moment that we have to think about, whether it's like, you know, it could be in whatever position, um, but it's just about identifying the things that are really bothering you on the field. And instead of looking at it as a negative, look at it as, okay, it's an objective. I'm going to overcome this. How am I going to overcome it? If awesome. That makes sense. Awesome. Really, really good question, Larissa. Um, next up, uh, ladies, if you want to join in, just unmute yourself and then uh, by all means you can ask your question otherwise uh, I'm basically just going to be start picking players and it'll be like hey so next coming up will be Emily Emily you're up oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay so based on your experience as um like a female mentor coach and soccer player what would you say are some of the key characteristics that are um key in female soccer players in order to excel in their soccer career Oh, that's a really good question. Um, so a little bit, number one is going to be um, learning how to channel your emotions. Females, we are very, well, we're overthinkers, um, are very emotional creatures. And um, sometimes we, you know, don't act the way we want to in certain situations or in stressful situations. Um, I think that working with the professionals on the provincial program, um, I could really see who had strong personalities. The ones that could take criticism is really important, um, but not take it to heart. So if a coach, you know, they, they test you in provincials, they will tell you that was an awful pass. Are you going to go and cry or are you going to be like, okay, I'm going to show you a better pass next time. You know, um, they're looking for this, um, resilience. They will um, give you a hard time. And I think that personally, it's not necessarily all the time that they should be doing that. Because at the end of the day, you're, you're working with humans, we're people. And, um, but they're, they constantly test us. Um, so I would say discipline, controlling your emotions, um, perseverance, someone that doesn't give up, um, when things get hard, um, and also having good energy. I really do believe in manifestation. So if you think good things about yourself, think good things about your teammates, good things about your coach, good things about your program, good things will happen to you. And maybe not in that order, in the order you think they're going to happen, but um, at the end of the day, uh, you're going to, to learn. And I think that um, coaches want people that are coachable. They, they call it student of the game. And, you know, for me, soccer has been a lifestyle. I've learned my life about it. So having strong values is also something. And not just having them, but also applying them. Um, so for me, things that I value would be, I train with a lot of heart. Um, I go out there every training session and I put the work in 10 times. I, I'm at training early, I'm running laps, I'm juggling. I go hard at training. And at the end of training, I think of something I want to do, whether it's a free kick, penalties, um, crosses. I always find someone to, to play with me at the end of a training session because it doesn't stop when the coach is off the field. Um, and that's, you know, again, you know, it could be discipline. That could be um, self perseverance or passion for the sport, you know? Um, but I think, you know, even being punctual is important. 
coaches love it when you show up on time. Um, and also having op open communication. Um, it's funny, there's a, one of my friends said this to me the other day. They said, uh, be stupid for a minute um, is better than being stupid for a lifetime. So every question you don't ask is an answer you'll never know. Um, and that's something that I think more players need to do is ask questions. Don't worry about humiliation because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if I think your question's funny. What matters is you get the answer you, you're asking, so you're better. And uh, that, that's something I think is a big problem with female soccer is people are almost scared to ask questions because when you're in a group setting, it's like intimidating sometimes, especially with strong, strong-minded women. Um, and that's something that I really stress in my, my teams I've coached because the more um, you're able to be open with yourself, with your team, with your coaches, um, the more we can love each other like a family and be there for each other, you know? And um, yeah, so those are some of the values and um, some characteristics I would say mm -hmm. would stick out to me as a coach if I were to see this in a player. Um, and also leadership. I think not everyone is born with leadership. That's something that I like to, to put on players. But if you are a natural leader, it's also um, a really good characteristic to have. That's awesome. Yeah, honestly, to add to that is uh, the positivity for sure. Um, when you're positive and um, things will be positive around you, you know what I mean? We, we, we constantly face daily obstacles um, all the time. So we have, if you can overcome them uh, when you're coming to your training sessions and you're positive and you give it all, you give it, give it all, give it a hundred percent. You know what I mean? Don't, don't, uh, don't leave anything outside. Don't leave anything back at, back at home. Right. You know what I mean? Come out, exactly. try hard. Positivity will over, will, will rule and uh, overcome anything. Right. So awesome. Now we'll take a couple more questions, ladies, and then we'll, uh, we'll wrap this up. Okay. So the next lucky contestant coming up to ask a question would be, let's go Kira. You're up Kira. It's all you. Okay. okay. Um, what do you think your biggest accomplishment as a player is, and uh, what did you do to accomplish it? Oof, that's a really good question. Um, oof, my biggest accomplishment as a player. It's a hard one. Um, I think surviving. Um, <laughs> I know this sounds kind of strange, but... Um, you know, I, I took a lot of risks in my, in my playing, a lot of things that most people would call me crazy for doing. Um, when you have a great job, when you are playing in your own city, um, when you have friends and family around you, you do you really need to, to go out looking for more? Um, that's why people would always question me. So for me, I never settled. Um, so my accomplishment was surviving in four different countries without speaking the language, um, being able to adapt to new training programs, um, adapting to new routines, new diets, um, new phases of play. I think as a person, that's one of the biggest things that I've learned is that I'm able to adapt. I'm able to look at a situation and throw away what I know because um, it's, I'm not at home. I can't say, oh, well, in Canada, I did this. It doesn't work that way when you live in another country. You're in that country. You have to indulge in their culture and respect, um, and respect that. So that's probably, as a player, my, my biggest thing was learning the life lesson of being able to adapt. I would say that's my proudest moment. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. We'll go with a couple more questions. Uh, ladies, if you want to feel free and join in, like uh, just jump in, go right ahead. Um, I'll leave it down to uh, another two, uh, two questions there and then uh, we'll wrap it up. So if anyone wants to jump in, go right ahead. If not, then I have, uh, I have another two players I can ask. So, and as we wait and we hear crickets, that is fantastic. All right. So we're going to go back to, uh, to, Lucky contestant, Natalie. Um, so, like, what advice would you give to us to help us balance our soccer life and our school life? 
Oh, that's a really great question. Um, you know, like, like I said at the beginning, it's really about um, creating a good routine, following up with healthy habits, and then being able to reach your excellence. So what that means, it's basically like understanding your priorities. Um, and like I said, everyone's priorities is something different. Um, you know, if you prioritize your friends and social life over going to a soccer practice, you're probably going to make 70% of your practices. If you prioritize soccer over school, you might be at every soccer practice, every game, but you might be getting 70s in class. Like it's about, it's really about understanding how to be a student athlete. And I think that everyone is different in that case. Um, for me, it was always difficult, not the social part because football for me overcame social everything. Like I said, I didn't go to my prom and it's not because I didn't have like a good time at school. I loved my friends at school. I had fantastic uh, uh, classmates, but I see them all the time. I see them all day. And it wasn't something that like I felt I needed to do when I'd rather be at soccer. So it's just really about um, creating short-term and long-term goals and goal setting is really important and not just being like, I want to, to play soccer at a professional level or I want a scholarship. It's about directional goals. So it's about saying, Hey, I want to go to Waterloo and play and get a scholarship, um, a sports scholarship and an academic scholarship. How do I do that? And then having those short-term goals and, understanding like okay i need to contact the coach okay i need to get this grade in my school okay i need to play with their team and see if i'm a good fit how do i do this um you have a great coach here um who i'm sure will help you on that in that direction when you get there but it's taking the steps um you know you guys are 16 i think yeah, yeah? 15, yeah, so 15, yeah. 15 16 yeah. So this is the time you guys need to be to be contacting schools. Um, this is the time you need to get your name out there to um, to make decisions on what you want to do as a career. That's difficult as well. Um, but yeah, like it comes down to, like I said, having a good routine, healthy habits, looking for your personal excellence and building yourself as a person, and then your priorities and then goal setting short term and long term. I think those are the basics of how to balance school and soccer and social life. Awesome. Really good. Thank you. Um, floor is open. Whoever wants a last question. If not, I already have a contestant in mind or athlete or superstar. So <laughs> I'm just waiting to see who would like to take that, that spot. All right. Okay. Cool. We're going to ask on Marissa. You're up. Last question of this webinar. Okay. Um, what are some things that like help help you stay motivated or in the right mindset throughout your career? Oh, that's a great one. Um, I had um, actually a very bad situation happened to me at a young age that changed my entire opinion of the game. I had a friend um, when I was 15 commit suicide and um, she was the connection I had with football. Someone that was a family friend that I played soccer with for probably about four times a week. Um, it was a very sad moment in my life. And so when that happened, I stopped playing soccer for three months and when I came back to it, I was a different person. I was, um, I looked at football as if it was numb to me. My body felt numb because it didn't matter how painful the training was, how stressed my body felt, how hurt I could be from comments people made if they said I wasn't good enough or if they gave me a bad crit criticism. It didn't matter. I wasn't going to die. That was my, my mentality. Um, so my self-motivation really came from 
uh, my friend Daniela um, with her passing because my greatest memories was with her playing football. And every time I went to the field, uh, I played for her every time. I still do. And when I train, it was like, I always felt she was like my, on my back because I said, okay, I have to, I have to carry both of us because we're both going to make it professional. We're both going to do this. This was our dream together. So I would always at training pick the best players or the people I had the most respect for. And I had to beat them in everything. I was incredibly competitive and that's why I was a lot better in a male environment because a lot of the girls took it as me coming after them on the field, but it was more of me wanting to show them respect because they were the best on the team and I wanted to be better than them or compete with them. Um, so for me, that was my, my self-motivation. That's how I, you know, even today I'm waking up at 645 in the morning, um, because I need to be better if I want to, to play for a good team in August. I'm preparing now in quarantine because it's the best time to. Um, it's, it's, about, it's about making that goal and making sure you reach it with, with uh, no doubts, I guess. That's kind of how I looked at it. There was no option to fail because um, I couldn't fail. It would be like, like admitting defeat to something. And uh, I wouldn't want that to be put on my feeling with my my friend Daniela so I was not allowed to be defeated that's kind of how I look at it <laughs> that's awesome um yeah thank um a couple things actually so first one each one has different strengths and weaknesses you know what I mean when it comes to yep. the game but uh for these ladies but um each one of you contribute to the magic that displays on the field you know what I mean and uh um I couldn't be more proud of each and every one of you. Uh, I just wanted to thank you guys uh, for the honor of coaching you uh, as being your coach for, I think it's now two seasons, going on three seasons now, minus the COVID. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to the next level and uh, the next, basically next pathway we take together. And um, you know what? This team, our team here, you guys are all quality. You got to have what it takes to take it to the next level. You got to believe in yourself. Um, having these webinars um, with uh, with inspirational uh, uh, players, athletes, people, um, fe female mentors is huge. So um, just believe in yourself. You know what I mean? Because the support is there. Um, I'm there. Uh, I could get I could get uh, other people to support. Allison, uh, thank you again. Um, you've been very inspirational, motivational, um, fantastic. Your journey, the the story that you have, and and, and your biography and your experiences. I believe, I strongly believe uh, experience is, um, uh, comes with also with knowledge. You don't just get that off the, uh, off the get-go. You don't just come into the game and be like, okay, I know everything, okay? Um, I'm, I'm still learning, of course, and uh, continue to do so. Uh, I love the game, uh, the passion of it. And uh, I couldn't thank you uh, enough to, to take your, uh, a time out of your day um, to come and talk to these ladies because um, I believe as a coach as well is trying to give you as much resources and, and tools to give you. You know what I mean? I can't, I can't, I can't, you can't, no can do this for the individual. You have to take that initiative and say, you know what? I'm, I'm going to take this next step. I'm going to wake up at 645 and I'm going to, I'm going to do what I need to do to, to get to the next level. So you have to really be push yourself. You really have to, uh, motivate and um, uh, we are gonna you all go through ups and downs guaranteed you know what I mean this is just part of life but if you can overcome them with positivity then uh, uh, you're 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 not one step but I believe you're 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 many steps ahead so yeah. again thank you very much Allison um, her Instagram again is 20 Canada with a K okay um, you can follow her on Instagram post your uh, training um, your individual training uh, we do ball mastery. So we do ball mastery twice a week. The girls okay. do strength and conditioning. Uh, I think it's six times a week. They do it uh, with uh, added cardio in there. So they're really motivated. They're really pushing hard. And uh, again, uh, many thanks uh, for coming out and speaking to these ladies. It's, uh, it's been fantastic. Um, I find that when you're having webinars and you talk about just soccer talk, you know what I mean? Uh, the time flies. We could sit here for, for more hours and keep talking because 
with so, so much passion behind it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and it's great to see, you know what I mean? It's not structured. It's not, Oh, we're going to ask these questions. It's just come out and ask whatever you like. So uh, again, from AIFC, uh, from the ladies, thank you very much. And uh, most definitely we'll have you back on um, uh, for another webinar, uh, different topics, or again, continue soccer talk. Cause I think it's a very important uh, for these ladies to have, uh, to have more voices. You know what I mean? Uh, listening to my boring voice all the time could be, uh, <laughs> could probably give you a headache, but uh, having uh, another voice out there, especially coming from uh, a female mentor, I think is a fantastic approach and um, great way to, uh, to, to get what you're missing. You know what I mean? So again, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, with that being said, um, I did talk about um, a little bit about leadership um, and I thought that you know, with women, um, it's very difficult sometimes to, to talk in front of other women because, you know, you're, it's intimidating sometimes. So I, I felt like today it's difficult to openly talk because it's like the situation is unnormal, especially on this. But I'm opening up to you girls. If you want to contact me, Facebook is, or sorry, um, Instagram is the easiest, but um, I'm also here to learn about your journeys. I think that. Um, as a coach, it's so important to understand each player and um, everyone walks their own shoes and has their own path. But um, the more you're open with your coaches, with your trainers, with yourself, with your parents and how you feel, um, it's the easier it is for everyone to, to help you. And um, I'm, like I said, I'm open. If anyone wants to message me individually and talk to me, um, I'm, I do this right now. That's my job. Well, my, I'm working on a project, but learning about people is really in, interesting to me. And um, if anyone feels like they have time in the day and they want to have a soccer conversation, feel free to hit me up. Um, I'm here for you guys. And uh, yeah. So. Thank you yeah. very much. Awesome. And uh, again, definitely we'll have you back out again for sure. And uh, ladies, you know what? Um, awesome. Thank you again. I can't thank you uh, enough.